Welcome to a quick video today. Today I wanted to talk about this, a package from the post office. Well, it's grey, and it arrives. It's also pixelated because it contains multiple addresses. Overall, let's get to 10. <laughs> so I purchased this um, eBay brand composite to VGA adapter. Now, I know what you're thinking, Matt, you goober, why didn't you get composite to HDMI? VGA is as dead as composite is, so what the hell are you doing with your life? And when are you moving out and getting a real job? Kind regards, Dad. Well, you see, while it's perfectly logical to get these old systems hooking up to modern TVs and monitors, what if you happen to have old monitors sitting around? Nice and small so they can fit on a desk, but with that retro feel that suits the system. That's right, I may have the looks of a beefcake stud muffin jock, but the truth is I spent a lot of time sitting at my computer desk. Crazy, I know. Well, most of these monitors definitely don't have any video game console connectivity, so if I did hypothetically want to hook up this to this, I would definitely need some kind of adapter like this. Now, some of you might already be thinking capture card, and in many ways that should be the solution since this is essentially getting a TV signal onto a computer monitor, but for retro games, I really don't want much lag, and even the cards that don't have two seconds of latency like the Elgato can still introduce a little bit. Now, we all know the fabulous reputation of eBay products, and while it's definitely not exactly undeserved, you can occasionally get something that works how it should. But how can you tell without buying the bullet and biting it? I mean, but, uh... Anyway, let's see what this thing is like. Now, could this adapter introduce latency? Absolutely, but I'm hoping not, and we won't know until we try. Opening the bag to find another bag! Inside here is the power adapter. Yes, this thing will need external power, unfortunately, since neither composite nor VGA will provide enough for the conversion. I wonder how much power, though. Maybe this thing could connect to USB or something. What else is in here? Oh cool, they actually gave me cables. Isn't that neato? VGA, composite, <laughs> even as video. That's nice of them. The manual? I can't waste my time reading about a game, I just gotta play it! Actually, I might need that later. And finally, the actual unit, encased in foamy wrapping. It's actually a lot smaller than I expected. For reference, it fits quite nicely right in the palm of my hand. Uh, hey YouTube, welcome to my unwrapping video of this dumb sh** from eBay. Let's have a look at the actual thing. Ooh, rubberized plastic. I actually really like this stuff. It feels really good on my body. Predictably, there's no brand or company name on this. It's always a good sign when no company willingly associates with the product. It also has that typical Times New Roman-esque font that you see on a lot of products from Asia. <laughs> okay, I'll stop being cynical. Hey, apparently it passed some sort of quality control. Not sure what that's worth, but hopefully it means it won't explode. Also, yeah, 5 volts, so theoretically it actually could run off USB, as long as it requires less than 500 milliamps. There's also a surprising amount of buttons on it. Who would have thought composite to VGA would have so many options? Ventilation holes too, they must get warm. I assume they're not speaker holes for it to make some kind of noise through. Well, time to fire it up. I'm starting with this old LCD monitor, VGA only. Let's plug in the power and hope that quality control is worth something. Here's the power adapter. Damn, two whole amps. And presumably it uses all of those, so my USB dream is dead as quickly as it started. Well, so far so good. It's even glowing blue. Wait, is it glowing through the quality control sticker? <laughs> Holy sh**, I think it is. Damn, they really wanted you to know this thing passed some kind of quality control. The power cable is quite short, maybe like a meter total. And unfortunately the video cables are no better. I think we're starting to see where the corners were cut. For my first trick, I'll be hooking up a previous star of the channel, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Exactly the kind of retro system I love to play around with sometimes. I'll be hooking it up via the provided RCA cable for enhanced testing action. Luckily the short ass RCA cable isn't that bad with this setup, but I can really see it all causing issues. Luckily RCA is still pretty common. Interestingly, this thing has two VGA ports on it. One's an input and the other's an output. It looks like you can pass a normal VGA signal through and then use the box to switch between it and the composite NES video. Yeah, that's kind of nifty. <laughs> I've been memeing this thing quite a bit so far, but honestly, it seems like some actual thought was put into it. Or, you know, it's a knockoff clone of a product with actual thought put into it. Strangely, the VGA on this side with the composite NES video inputs is the VGA output, and the one on this side is the input. <laughs> it almost seems like a mistake, like shouldn't all the inputs be on one side and the side with only one plug be the output? 
<laughs> Anyways, enough talk. Let's hook up the monitor and see what actually happens. Man, these cables are shorter than my dick. <laughs> That's saying something. Oh, it's blue. I guess that kind of makes sense. It's basically emulating a TV, kinda. Okay, time for the moment of truth. I'm turning on the power. Hey, it works. Pretty quick response time too. On my actual HD TV, it takes like a second or two to pick up a new input. $20 eBay box, not so. Now we can play some uh, California games. I'm amazed, I can't feel any input lag at all. This thing actually so far seems to be doing a good job. Uh, yeah, I'm a footbag champ, what of it? Want to see how to high score the BMX every single time? Your score actually goes up with every jump, so you can literally just let it go as slowly as possible and keep mashing jump and eventually you'll high score. It's really that easy. Peak game design right here. There's only one word to describe that. <laughs> how about a game that doesn't suck? Classic Super Mario Brothers. Again, this thing is very playable. As you know, I was dreading that there'd be some kind of input lag, but I still don't feel any. But you don't have to take my word for it, we can use the audio from the camera as a somewhat non-scientific test. If you look at the audio from my camera, this transient here is me pressing the button, and you can see only about one to two frames of latency between pressing the button and the game responding, which is really not bad. Especially considering this doesn't factor in whatever lag the monitor might have, or whatever delay the game may take processing the input and outputting video. Like I said, very non-scientific, but I think it's safe to say the lag is virtually non-existent. I'm kind of astounded. I set myself up for disappointment so much that I really wasn't expecting this. Let's see what these buttons do. Naturally, you can switch between composite, this video, and the VGA pass-through. A PIP button? What is that? Picture in picture? I'm gonna have to come back to that. A reset button, which didn't seem to do anything. A mode button. Oh wow, so this is even upscaling the signal as it runs and can output various resolutions. A menu button? Whoa, an actual UI! But how am I meant to navigate this? Oh, okay, the buttons have arrows. Again, kind of well thought out. For a pretty damn cheap piece of tech. The menu has a bunch of picture settings, which I probably won't touch, but it's cool that they're there. Lastly, P.P .P cycles through some presets. Alright, I gotta see what this PIP mode is like. Enter Windows 98 at a crisp 1280 by 1024. Now we can do some switching between composite and VGA. Alright, but let's check out the star of the show, PIP time. Whoa, holy sh**, those maniacs actually did it! Not gonna lie, this is maybe the coolest thing I've ever seen. A hardware picture-in-picture -picture mixing composite and VGA. I didn't even ask for this or know that this thing had it. The VGA signal doesn't even look degraded. I guess it just hijacks and replaces that specific square of pixels and leaves the rest untouched. This is kind of awesome. Yo, peep this 3000 IQ idea. Lego Island in the background, NES in the foreground. <laughs> okay, apparently it doesn't like picture in picture on 640x480. But that's okay, we can try windowed Lego Island for the native resolution. There we go. Ah, oh, that's that! That's that! Okay, let's swap this out now. How about we try a slightly newer console? We can hook this one up through S Video 2 for a better idea about its quality looks pretty good. Though with a higher resolution image, it is slightly easier to nitpick the quality. The deinterlacing algorithm looks fairly simplistic. You can see it's a little blocky vertically. In fact, it's probably just doubling the vertical resolution rather than any kind of intelligent smoothing. But actually, I'm all right with that. At the very least, because a better deinterlacing algorithm would definitely add to the price or the input lag or both. I'm also seeing some of these reds seem to be blowing out the image, but that may just be the monitor itself. Let's try a different one. Now this is a good VGA monitor. The reds here look a lot less blown out, so that does seem to be the issue, and not the adapter itself, which is nice. You could also probably say, in general, the upscaling is not that great, but same with before, I'm willing to accept this as a trade-off due to its cheapness and the low input lag. But, you know, it's definitely not recording quality, which is why it's a fraction of the price of an Elgato. Okay, one last test, the PlayStation 2. Unlike the previous consoles, which both rendered at about 240p, this will actually render full 480i images, which is about as high res as you can get from S-Video anyway. Again, it's not bad at all, and still not feeling any input lag. Honestly, I'm really surprised. For my purposes, this thing actually seems to work just how I wanted. Now, granted, this is a fairly niche thing to do nowadays, your purposes may not be my purposes at all, but if they are, I honestly recommend it. At the very least for the ability to play LEGO Island and NES at the same time. 